electric vehicles have become the latest in a series of threats to Europe's already beleaguered refinery sector, which has seen the closure of more than 2 million barrels per day of capacity in recent years from a combination of falling demand for refined products and an increasing number of environmental directives from the EU. Demand looks set to fall further as a result of recent moves by European governments to ban or restrict petrol and diesel-powered motor cars from various dates up to 2040. Much of the EU's policy on transport fuels has focused on carbon emissions from motor vehicles. The effect of this has been to favour diesel-powered vehicles over petrol-driven ones on the grounds that the former produce less carbon dioxide per mile than those that run on gasoline. The policy started to unravel, however, when it emerged in 2015 that German car maker Volkswagen had installed software in its diesel motor cars which was designed to record lower levels of pollution when tested by US regulators than was the case under actual driving conditions. Growing concern, therefore, about diesel exhaust emissions has led to a call for controls on use of the fuel. Recently, however, some European governments have announced plans to phase out diesel cars entirely. In several places, including the UK and France, it has been proposed to ban petrol vehicles as well, in favour of a wholesale switch to electric vehicles. In several cases recently, including the UK and France, governments have proposed a ban on petrol vehicles as well, and they're favouring therefore a wholesale switch to electric vehicles. The phase-outs come in the form of a ban in the UK and France by 2040, in Germany by 2030, and Norway close to home at 2025. These phase-outs therefore will lead to a drop in the demand for gas, petrol and diesel within Europe, and is likely to be mirrored in markets in America and Asia. Europe's refining system has traditionally been configured to produce gasoline and petrol, but as demand for diesel grew, many refiners invested heavily in hydrocracking in order to increase their yields of diesel. At the end of the 1990s, consumption of petrol and diesel was more or less equal across Europe. Now, automotive diesel consumption is more than twice that of gasoline, and the EU therefore has a net import of diesel, while at the same time having a net surplus of gasoline. The problems with diesel exhaust emissions was expected to produce something a swing back to gasoline power cars in Europe and therefore to give EU refiners more of a balanced production slate. But plans announced in several member states recently to phase out gasoline as well as diesel cars means that EU's refiners are likely to have a surplus of both fuels in the next 15 to 20 years. Refiners in other regions could also have a significant excess of the two fuels, especially if concern over diesel emissions spreads. China already has plans to reduce demand for both petrol and diesel in an effort to tackle the problem of pollution in major cities, and is putting a good deal of effort into developing the necessary battery technology for electric vehicles. Even before the latest pronouncements on electric vehicles, Europe was thought to have around a million barrels per day of excess crude distillation capacity. And it's forecasted as a result of plans to move to electric vehicles, this figure may soon grow to around 2 million barrels per day. Demand for petrol and diesel will not completely disappear over the coming decades. There's always going to be a demand for any vehicles sold prior to the ban, and Commercial vehicles are likely to be slower on the uptake of battery technology than we'll see in the domestic space. And in the broader space, there's likely to be a growing market for marine diesel, which could absorb some of the material that would otherwise have gone into the car sector. While the liquid fuels market constitutes an unknown in terms of future demand, the uptake of electric vehicles is clearly another uncertainty. Whilst the development of the new technologies are proceeding well, Batteries that will enable motor vehicles to operate in a similar manner to those that we see in petrol and diesel cars today still appears to be several years away. There are also formidable obstacles to overcome in terms of supplying electricity to enable large numbers of vehicle batteries to be recharged quickly and economically. The British government, the electric car's newest fan, faces delays to its nuclear power programme as a result of what's been described as white hole paralysis, and huge cost overruns on the construction of a 3.2 gigawatt station at Hinkley Point. Adding to the financial and political woes was the collapse recently of the US nuclear business of Toshiba, the main shareholder in a consortium plans to develop another plant in the northwest of England at Moorside. Both Moorside 
and Hinkley Point are meant to replace nuclear capacity that is being retired and, as such, are both supposed to start supplying power to the grid in 2025. And let's be honest, that looks highly unlikely at present. Self-evidently, all other factors are being considered. As we move from a fossil burning to electric-powered vehicle world, we're going to see increasing demands on electricity systems and transmission networks. Some estimates of additional generation capacity required indicate that in the UK alone will need another 8 gigawatts as early as 2030 and 18 gigawatts by 2050. Or, putting that in context, just over 5.5 power stations the size of Hinkley Point. In the absence of any comprehensive European plan to meet the forecast demand for electricity, one answer might lie in the provision of standby generation capacity that can be brought online quickly to meet peaks in demand. This indeed already takes place to some extent, and some of those generators run on diesel. Thus, one unlocked consequence of electric vehicles may be an increase in oil-fired power generation. Refiners may also find some growth for middle distillate marine grass oils. None of these new markets, though, will be able to replace the petrol and diesel displaced by the widespread uptake of electric motor cars. And therefore, regrettably, much like a lot of the existing fossil fuel market in Europe, Europe's excess refining capacity is likely to see more pruning. All is not lost, however. Several refiners are likely to follow the existing trend of converting to storage sites and import terminals. The smaller and less sophisticated refiners are most vulnerable, though a few may survive for political reasons. The trend to fewer refiners is clear. And once again, the impact that battery storage and electric vehicles is going to have over the coming years is clear for all to see.